Disclaimer. This video is high in speculation and low in evidence. I am not claiming it's true, I'm merely asking questions. Take it with a grain of salt. In our previous research about ancient atmospheric illumination, it was claimed that Turkmenistan was the ancient world center of harvesting atmospheric energy, using antennas and a substance called red gold. The manufacturing center was the town of Hazer, at the Caspian Sea. To rurals, it's known as the Sea of Khazar. The town Hazer is also pronounced Khazar, named after the Turkic Tartarian Kingdom of Khazaria, which encompassed what we today know as Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and the countries around that sea. It's the largest landlocked lake in the world. The claim, made without evidence, made me curious, and I began to research. People who have traveled to Turkmenistan told me it's mysterious. But what's so mysterious about it? The fact that it has the highest density of marble buildings in the world. The oddity that daytime streets of the capital city Ashgabat are mostly empty, even though there are millions of inhabitants or that the country has a literacy rate of 98%, compared to 79% in the US, while also banning satellite dishes and free internet. If it's true that Hazer used to be the world capital of atmospheric energy and red gold, it would make it the most likely area to still know about the ancient skill of harvesting it. There are peculiar things about Turkmenistan that make me wonder whether their government are either a. secretly still harvesting atmospheric energy, b. preparing to harvest atmospheric energy, or c. nostalgically imitating ancient energy harvesting architecture. Consider my videos on ancient atmospheric illumination and ancient towers as antennas while viewing these images from around Turkmenistan. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The government has been building edifices that have little to do with the lifestyle of the people of Turkmenistan. The Turkmen themselves are puzzled about what their government is doing. They call this an indoor ferris wheel in Ashgabat. What's your first intuitive hunch about it? Could it have another purpose than just ferris wheel? There are antenna-like fixtures atop the poles in the building. Some tourists report disappointment that they can't see much from this ferris wheel. Isn't seeing the surroundings one of the purposes of a ferris wheel? And what's this small silver device all the way on the left? The wheel is covered by an octogram, or rub el formed around what appears to be a golden sun at the center. It's interesting to look at, but the arcane symbolism seems out of place for an object that's supposedly for mere amusement. This image is said to be a wedding hall in Ashgabat. Again, an antenna-like golden pole, an object on top. If this pyramid doubles as an energy harvester, then the waters could be used as coolants. These are peculiar street lamps. Is it all just ornamental? Or, is there a hidden function? Is it just aesthetics? Or, is energy from the air being harnessed here? If you say bro, you have an overactive imagination. This is nothing more than a rich government showing off. I appreciate that. But nothing new is ever discovered by taking things for granted. The government of Turkmenistan likes the eight-pointed star. Here it is again. The golden plates that line the surface light up at night. Peculiar poles and antennas are found across Turkmenistan. I looked up all towns, not just the capital. Pointed antennas are common, even with buildings that are not meant to be transmitters or receivers of energy. With the TV tower, upper right, it makes sense to have an antenna, but not with the hotel, upper left, or any random statue, bottom. I see four potential methods of harvesting energy in this image. Sometimes the sheer amount of lamps on tall poles leads to suspect energy harvesting from the air. There are many lighting methods, there could be lighting fixtures on buildings for example, but not here. The upper left picture in this image shows the presidential palace. In Turkmenistan, it's standard to have large bodies of water in front of large buildings. Is that a method of cooling the gigantic energy harvesters? I've selected each of the photos for a specific reason, but I'm not going to point it out for each picture to leave space for your own examination. 
See, for example, if you find a heavy marble ball that appears to be floating in air unsupported. Even small pavilions in residential areas are equipped with antenna-like poles. Were pavilions originally meant to energize those who inhabit them? Across the country, there are futuristic looking poles sticking out of the ground. At the time of this video, I didn't find an official explanation for them. Harvesting electricity from the air can be as easy as sticking an iron pole into the ground. The higher it reaches, the more electricity is collected. Here's one of many videos that explains it, on YouTube the title of the video is, How Powering with Atmospheric Electricity Works. Sure, the towers could serve many purposes. The one in these images could be a phone tower. But if not energy collectors, what are they? Notice the pole sticking out of the yellow box in the ground. What is it? Notice the antennas atop the minaret. Why? I don't recall seeing the saw minarets in any other country. Does this look like a normal rural street to you? Or an electricity plant? Why are there so many street lamps? And why are they so tall? Harvesting atmospheric energy requires a certain height of the poles, as explained in the video I showed earlier. In this image, notice the tower on the left. What is it? A close-up of one of these towers. Take a close look at these photos. What do you see? Notice the rings atop each lamp. And there's one of those strange poles or towers again. I've traveled the world, visited every continent except for the ice wall, but I've never seen light bulbs that look like they are self-powered. I have next to no knowledge of electricity, but even an amateur sees the decorative stuff beside the lamps in these images are likely not just for decoration. Someone with more technical knowledge than myself needs to look into this. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2.